reading for June 7th entitled, Called to Glory and Virtue. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 5. God has called us to glory and virtue. We have no right to assimilate with the world, dressing, talking, and living as worldlings do. God has given us a high standard to reach. To enable man to reach this standard, God sent into the world His only begotten Son. In our behalf, Christ made an infinite sacrifice. He laid aside His kingly crown and royal robe, clothed His divinity with humanity, and came into our world to teach men and women the laws of life and salvation, which they must carry out to the letter in order to have everlasting life in the kingdom of glory. Satan claimed that it was impossible for human beings to keep God's law. In order to prove the falsity of this claim, Christ left his high command, took upon himself the nature of man, and came to the earth to stand at the head of the fallen race in order to show that humanity could withstand the temptations of Satan. He became the head of humanity to be assaulted with temptations on every point as fallen human nature would be tempted that he might know how to succor all who are tempted. On this earth, he worked out the problem of how to live in accordance with God's standard of right. Bearing our nature, he was true to God's standard of righteousness, gaining the victory over Satan. He was tempted in all points like as we are, yet he was without sin. Before Christ came in person to reveal his Father's character, Satan thought that he would have the whole world on his side. And today the enemy is still playing the game of life with everyone. He seeks to bring in dissension and division. But if we are partakers of the divine nature, we will stand as a united whole. Let us not think that our churches can enjoy God's blessing while in a state of disunion. In this world, we are to be representatives of Christ. He has called us to glory and virtue. As He represented the Father, so we are to represent Him to the world. For in representing Him, we are representing the Father, who is in every place to help where help is needed. We have a great work to perform for the Master. After Jesus has sacrificed so much in our behalf, giving His life for our salvation, Shall we by our course of action make him ashamed of us? He desires to see us rise to the highest standard. When by living faith we lay hold of the power of a living Christ, when we plead his unfailing promises and claim them as ours, when we seek for the power of the Holy Spirit, we are eating the flesh and drinking the blood of the Son of God. Taken from Manuscript 77, dated June 7, 1902, a sermon given at the Petaluma, California campground entitled Lessons from the Second Chapter of Peter.